bugs. They're creepy, crawly and crunchy. Some are even deadly, but there's one that could do more damage than a whole blimp full of killer bees. And it's not that type of bug, but this type. Computer bugs have become more and more common, and my hypothesis is that it has something to do with an increase in these bad boys. There was one where PayPal accidentally made some random guy the richest person in the world by briefly giving him 94 quadrillion dollars by mistake, or when NASA, who I've heard are meant to be pretty smart and good at computers and stuff, lost their 154 million dollar Marina 1 spacecraft because it incorrectly transcribed a command. One of the most infamous computer bugs in history is Y2K. Well, those bugs are going to crawl all over our computers and make the planes fall out of the sky. Like all good things and WWE, this was half real and half fake. Phony, fake. The fear was that at the turn of the century, computers wouldn't understand how to encode the year 2000, and therefore everything would break. The issue was mainly caused by damn computer nerds, who, in an attempt to make their code more concise, only used the last two digits of the year in code, meaning that when the year 2000 rolled around, it would be indistinguishable from the year 1900. There were plenty of fixes for the bug, and most systems worked fine. The world may not have ended, but there were some issues, ranging from the small, in Australia bus ticket validation machines in two states failed to operate, to the pretty serious, in the UK 154 expectant mothers were sent incorrect risk assessments for Down syndrome because the hospital computers miscalculated the mother's age. Like all good news stories, fake or not, there were people out there peddling it for their own ulterior motives. Much like current figures who employ this tactic, they whipped up hype and fear just to try and sell some poorly made merch. Even religious leaders were in on it. The far-right Christian Reverend Jerry Falwell, who also once tried to out Tinky Winky as gay, started selling tapes called A Christian's Guide to the Millennium Bug for $28, which is equivalent to more than $40 in today's money. However, for all the hype and scaremongering, most people were completely unaffected, so it seems all those people were either just ignorant to the truth or trying to whip up hype and hysteria. On an unrelated note, did you know that on the 19th of January 2038, we're all gonna die? That's right, it's happening again. There's another time encoding bug that could, in theory, destroy civilization as we know it. Planes will fall out of the sky, Siri's gonna throw a fit. Most importantly, those weird talking toilets will stop working. The cause of this bug is a little bit more complicated than it was back in 2000. Firstly, we need to understand what 32-bit Unix time is. So basically, some computers encode their time using 32-bit Unix time. This counts the seconds since the 1st of January 1970. The way this is stored is in binary code with 32 digits, either ones or zeros. But due to the very finite nature of the number 32, there's only a certain amount of permutations of ones and zeros that can exist. And therefore, the system can only count to around 2,147,000,000 seconds. This means that at roughly 3.14 and 7 seconds on the 19th of January 2038, the system will roll around and start encoding negatively, outputting the date as the 13th of December 1901, at which point everybody will be like, OMG, TGI Friday. The reason it would go all the way back to 1901, not to 1970, is because 32-bit is a signed integer, meaning it can store the number in positive or negative. This is useful for computer systems trying to recall dates before 1970. Now, I have a confession to make. I don't actually know a whole lot about those weird talking toilets, and if I'm honest, I don't really want to know any more than I already do. So I don't know that they definitely use 32-bit Unix time, and therefore would stop working in 2038. However, there are some things that we know run on their system, and unfortunately a lot of them are what are called integrated systems. These are systems that are meant to last the lifetime of the machine, meaning that they were never meant to be updated, making it pretty hard to do so. So although planes might not literally fall out of the sky like stones, some important features like GPS receivers and other navigational systems could stop working. This isn't the first time 32-bit encoding has caused an issue. Once again, those smart people over at NASA were outsmarted. They lost contact with the Deep Impact spacecraft sometime between August the 11th and 14th, 2013. Luckily, by this time, the probe had completed its primary objective and was now being used to observe comets as well as other things. Ironically, the spacecraft's fault protection software measured time in tenths of seconds and 38 minutes and 49 seconds past midnight on August the 11th was the maximum number of tenths of a second the computer could count to. This led to endless reboots and the spacecraft was lost. YouTube also used to use the same format to encode the view counter under their videos. All was peaceful until an unknown K-pop star released his unsuspecting hit. Gangnam Style took the world by storm and quickly amassed a crazy amount of views. Eventually the guys at YouTube realised they had a problem? If Gangnam Style hit that magic number, the next person to view the video would take the view count into the negatives. YouTube quickly updated their view counter to 64-bit encoding and the looming crisis was averted. 
There are a few solutions to the 2038 problem. One is basically to just copy YouTube and upgrade to 64-bit Unix time, which would give us more time than we'll realistically need. 64-bit Unix time would overflow roughly 292 billion years from now which is about 20 times greater than the estimated age of the universe. So just do what previous generations have and say, eh, future generations will fix it somehow. The issue would be the logistics of updating all these systems, as well as the compatibility with devices that didn't do the upgrade. Another solution would be to change to an unsigned system, which would give us a little bit more time to work stuff out. We'd have until 2106, but any systems wanting to get pre-1970 data would be out of luck. So the world is most likely safe because although none of the solutions are perfect, something can be done to prevent doom. One thing that no one would see coming would be if this video broke YouTube. Now, I know it sounds pretty crazy, but hear me out. All we'd have to do is to get to the maximum value of a 64-bit integer, which is about just a touch over 9 quintillion. And by a touch, I mean 223 quadrillion over 9 quintillion. Uh, so be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel if it's not too much hassle could you go ahead and try and get everybody on the planet to watch this video a little over a billion times each. No biggie right?